Hey guys, Jeffrey from Headstrong Training Systems here. So today we're gonna to be looking at the deadlift and in particular we're gonna be breaking down um, the slack pull and the wedge. Now, I've already done a previous video on the slack pull and the wedge before, but today I wanna to present to you guys another way of essentially um, interpreting how to perform the slack pull and the wedge. So basically, just to do a quick recap of the previous video, we all know that the slack pull on the wedge is basically to take that to take the slack out of the bar, um, that clink between the bar and the plates, so that when you break the bar off the floor, there isn't a first a distance that's being traveled by the bar to meet the plate, as in the plate and the bar becomes a whole object already. Now, the analogy I want to give you guys today is when you perform the slap pull and the wedge, don't think of it as you're trying to start the movement, you're, not, you're trying to break the bar off the floor straight away, because you're not. The slap pull and the wedge is essentially, it's still part of your setup. It's still, even though, yes, we are lifting the bar slightly, we are raising the body, that's still part of your setup. That's still part of our setup we perform to tension the body to get ourselves into the right position. So don't think of, of it as, you know, the slap pull and the wedge is, trying to, is us trying to break the bar off the floor, trying to perform the movement. Because when people think about it like that, they try, they try to be very forceful with it. And I'm not saying that, like having force and generating power is a, is a bad thing, but they take it too far as in they sacrifice their technique, their form at the cost of speed. Because it's, at lighter weights, it's very easy and it can be very addictive, you know, to be very forceful, very fast with the slack pull in the wedge at the point where it's, it's not actually you taking the slack out of the bar. It's just you throwing the bar very quickly because the weight is so light. So it looks like you're taking the slack and wedge out, but you're actually not. You're essentially just gripping and ripping and then performing the lift again. Now, the analogy I want to talk about today is instead of treating the slack pull and as thinking about raising the whole barbell and the plates, think of it as you're just trying to raise the middle of the bar. So think about it like this. If, say, um... I had about a thousand kilos on the bar or a, a, a very heavy amount of weight where that when and I used a forklift to pick it up. If I've got about 500 kilos on each side and the forklift picks up the barbell from the middle, which is you essentially, you're picking up the bar from the middle, the sides would come down. The, the sides of the plates will bend down because of the sheer weight and you see the bar would, kind of, would become curved like an inverted U. Now that's the kind of, um, that's essentially our end goal. When we take slack out of the bar, think, don't think of it as you trying to lift the whole barbell. Think of it as you just trying to lift the middle section of the bar, like that highest point of the U, and you're that forklift trying to apply force through here. Because, because essentially what that does is, it, it teaches you to be a bit more dainty with the bar when you take the slack out, because the goal of taking the slack out, it's not for us to be as, as forceful as you can, you know, yanking at the bar. All we need is to just apply a little bit of force through the middle, to take that slack out. It's a, very, it's a very gentle movement, essentially. So basically, to summarize what we've gone over today, when I teach the slack pull, when, when the next time you're performing the slack pull, instead of you having in your head thinking that um, you just want to break the whole barbell off the floor, because I think the problem with that is people think of it as, oh, the slack wall is just them breaking the bar off the floor and then performing the lift after, where the problem with that is, you know, you, you're going to throw yourself out of position, um, you're going to be preloading yourself, you're going to be pre-exhausting yourself because you're using so much tension that the bar actually comes off the floor. Like, yes, at lighter weights and when you're able to perform such a powerful and efficient slack pulling wedge, the bar will come off the floor at lighter weights, but that shouldn't be your goal. When you perform the slack pull in the wedge, you shouldn't be thinking ahead, oh, I, I want this bar to come to the floor very fast um, during the slack pull because I want to show everyone how strong I am. No, that's not, that's not the goal. When we, the speed and if the bar popping off the floor should come as a result of your power. It shouldn't become at a sacrifice of technique. So re basically to recap today, slack pull during the slack pull, um, be a bit more dainty with it because the goal is to just take the slack out of the bar. It's not to break the barbell off the floor. So that's all from me today, guys. Hopefully that's helpful for you, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.